Today, I've got a fun number theory problem from step two, which is Cambridge University's maths entrance exam. Two parts to this problem. Part one, we want to find all pairs of integers n and p, positive integers, where p is a prime number that satisfy n factorial plus five equals p. Part two, in this part of the question, you may use the following two theorems. The n is at least seven, one factorial times three factorial times so on, all the way up to two n minus one factorial is bigger than four n factorial. And theorem two, for every positive integer n, there's a prime number between two n and four n. Find all pairs of positive integers n m that satisfy one factorial times three factorial times dot 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 times two n minus one factorial equals m factorial. Let's dive in. So part one here is kind of a very standard number theory problem. Uh, when you see factorials, you know that when you have large factorials, it's going to have lots of factors. And we're going to use that here to our advantage. We notice that if n is at least 5, n factorial plus 5, well, n if n is at least 5, n factorial will contain a multiple of 5. And uh, because it, if n is at least 5, there'll be a 5 in the product. Then obviously, if you add 5, it's still a multiple of 5. So this will be 5m, and it's clearly bigger than 5, so it can't be prime. So if there's any hope of there being any solutions to this equation, we need, we need n to be less than 5. And in fact, we can see here n would have to be even for this to work because, um, actually, no, that's not quite true. n could be odd. Um, but So let's just test them one by one. So if n is 1, you get 1 plus 5, that's 6, that doesn't work. 2 factorial plus 5, that's 7, that does work. 3 factorial plus 5, that's 6 plus 5, which is 11, that does work. And then 4 factorial plus 5, that's 24 plus 5. That's 29. That does work as well. So you get three solutions to part one. OK, great. Let's look now at part two. We want to use these two theorems to work out the number of solutions to this equation here. And it's going to be a similar vibe where if n or m is sufficiently big, there aren't going to be any solutions here. Well, if n is at least seven, we can use this first theorem. So if n is at least seven, we're going to show that there are no solutions. Well, this left-hand side here, this 1 factorial times 3 factorial times blah, 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 times 2n minus 1 factorial, we know that that's bigger than 4n factorial. So if there's any hope of this thing here equaling m factorial, we know that m would have to be at least 4n, so bigger than 4n. But there's an issue with this, because if we use statement 2, or theorem 2, sorry, there's some prime number between 2n and 4n. Let's call this prime number p. The issue is, well, this cannot possibly equal an m factorial then, because in this product on the left-hand side, it's made up of a bunch of factorials, but all of the factorials are numbers less than 2n. And so none of these numbers here can be a multiple of p, because p is a prime number bigger than 2n. But we know that m here is bigger than 4n, and so therefore it will be bigger than p. And so p will divide m factorial. So p divides this number, but it doesn't divide this number, and so they can't be the same. So that means that there are no solutions where n is at least 7, which means I just need to check manually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you can see these numbers are going to get quite big on the left-hand side quite quickly, but there are some tricks we can employ to meaning that we don't actually have to check all of them in thorough detail. So let's start with n is 1. So I'm just going to call this left-hand side here f of n. So this thing here, I'm just going to refer to as f of n. So f of 1 is just 1 factorial, um, and that is obviously a factorial. So, it's, um, so the solution 1, 1 works. If we look at f of 2, that's going to be 1 factorial times 3 factorial, which is 6, which is 3 factorial. So 2, 3 is also a solution. What about f of 3? Well, that's 1 factorial times 3 factorial times 5 factorial. Well, that's 6. And 6 times 5 factorial, well, that's 6 factorial. So 3, 6 is also a solution. Let's try 4. So f of 4 next. That's going to be basically this number here. So 6 factorial times uh, 7 factorial. And now you might ask, well, is this a... Is this a uh, uh, factorial or not, and it turns out that it is. This is going to equal 10 factorial. So you can either check that manually. It's not too difficult to do. If you to bring this 7 over onto this side, this is going to be 7 factorial times, um, oh, in fact, we can just keep it like this. So 6 factorial times 7 factorial. Uh, so, uh, 7 factorial gives you uh, 7 times 6 times 5, 
times four times three times two. Um, this the five and the two that gives you ten, and then the four, three, and six that get, multiplies to give you seventy two, which is nine times eight. So you get ten times nine times eight times seven times a six factorial, uh, which will give you ten factorial. So we get another solution. So four, ten is a solution. Okay, now how about five? So f of five, that's going to be uh, this number here, which is 10 factorial multiplied by nine factorial, like so. And now hopefully you can see that this will not be a factorial because clearly it's going to be bigger than 10 factorial. But the issue is any factorial that's bigger than 10 factorial is like 11 factorial, 12 factorial, whatever. It has a multiple of 11 in it. But clearly, this number will not be a multiple of 11. So f of 5 won't work. Similarly, f of 6, you can check, doesn't work as well. So if I squeeze this maybe at the top here, f of 6, that's going to be 1 factorial times 3 factorial times blah, 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 all the way up to 11 factorial. This thing here is quite clearly bigger than uh, 12 factorial because you've got an 11 factorial in it, and uh, 3 factorial times 5 factorial is bigger than 12. In fact, 5 factorial itself is bigger than 12. So this thing here is bigger than 12 factorial. And so if there's any hope of this being a factorial, it has to be 13 factorial or higher. But then that means it's got a factor of 13. But clearly, this left-hand side does not contain a 13 in it. And so therefore, we'd only have these solutions here. 1, 2, 3, 4.